<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you if you have a PlayStation Vita, a Vita TV, or a PlayStation TV, whatever he wants to call it, and if you are on firmware 3.60, how you can install Hinkaku Enzo. So we're going to be doing this from start to finish, meaning that I'm going to take a Vita right here that does not have Hinkaku or has had it uninstalled, and we are going to be installing it and putting Enzo on here. Now, I did a tutorial on Hinkaku a while ago, so why am I redoing this? Well, I'm redoing this tutorial because we now have Enzo out, which means that you'll be able to launch Hinkaku and boot into your custom firmware on boot. You no longer have to connect and re-download or update or, uh, you know, in a way, tether your Vita uh, in order to get Hinkaku running on there. So the best comparison that most people have been saying is this is a lot like a untethered jailbreak where instead of having to turn the system on, reconnect, and then, you know, quote unquote, re-jailbreak the system, it will be jailbroken on boot, even though that's not the term, but that's going to be the thing we're comparing it to. So first thing you need to do is, of course, you need to have your PlayStation Vita and make sure it is on firmware 3.60. If it's too high, you cannot do this. If it's too low, then you need to update to 3.6. Now, once all this comes up, we're going to go ahead and unlock our Vita right here. So we should be good on that. And we are now going to go over to the web browser and go to the Hinkaku website. This is assuming that you have not installed it before. But even if you have installed it, I'd recommend doing this just to get the latest version. So you need to go over to right here, hinkaku.xyz, and that's what the website you're going to need to load is. Once this comes up, we're going to go ahead and hit install. And then it's going to give us this warning right here. And we're going to hit install on that. Well, if I can actually get to it. And now just wait for this right here to finish up. This is now going to download all the files that we need. Once this has happened, go ahead, hit OK right here and just wait. Now, once Molecular Shell pops up, we're just going to wait for it to go through all this. What it's going to do is it's going to download all the files needed to build the package and install it on here. And then you'll have Molecular Shell. So now when that is complete, it's automatically going to close out of your web browser. And what you need to do is you need to go down here and you're going to find Molecular Shell. Now, all you need to do is come over here, start this up. And if this pops up, which is going to look a lot like PSP Filer, as you can see, this is it. You have now technically modified your Vita because you now have Hinkaku running on it. So it's going to give us this warning right here. Just go ahead and press X. And we will need to keep that in mind because we are going to be doing a few things on here. But if you want to, what you can do is you can press start, go over to your settings, go ahead and go over to configure right here, go down to Hinkaku settings, and we want to enable unsafe homebrew. So go ahead and check that. And also this is the nice thing as well too. You can go ahead and edit all this other stuff as well too. If you want to unlink your memory card so you could use it in other types of things. There's the content downloader. And uh, of course also a spoofed version so if you want to get on PSN, you can. Right now, the latest version is 3.65. So you can go ahead and spoof that if you want to. But once that's done, all you need to do is really just exit out of your settings. You can go back right here. And now, technically, if you want to leave this as is, I will show you what the process will be every single time you want to run any bit of homebrew. So let's say you want to leave this as is right here. What you need to do is turn on your PlayStation Vita. And this is what we've been doing for the past year or so. And once your Vita pops up, we're now going to try and run molecular shell because we need that to start running before we can run any type of homebrew. <clears throat> So normally this would be as easy as going down here, opening up Molecular Shell, and pressing Start on that. However, we get an error. This is where the tethered part comes into play. In order to do this properly, you actually need to go to Install, press X on there, and then it will go and run the tethered exploit. And then once this is done, you'll be able to run all your homebrew and all the other stuff that you want to on your Vita. But you have to do that every single time you power off and power your Vita back on, which of course can get a little bit tedious. So now that that is all done. If you try and run Molecular Shell, check this out. We're going to press X and it should boot up right here. That all looks good and well, but we're going to try and improve that using Enzo. So now at this point, now that you have this open, what you need to do is press select on your Vita. This is going to pop up and you're going to take note of this IP and the port. And now we are going to install our first piece of homebrew on here outside of Molecular Shell, which will be Enzo. So now we need to go over to a computer in order to finish this up. So when you're at your computer, 
computer, this is on Windows at least, I'm going to recommend a few things. First off, download the FileZilla client right here, and just get the regular version if you get that. And then, we're also going to need to go over to uh, enzo.hinkaku.xyz, which the link will be down below in the description. So when you come onto this page, I'd highly recommend giving this a quick read, and then you want to click this gray box right here to download the Enzo file. When you get it, you're going to get this enzo.vpk file, go ahead and press save wherever you want to save it, and then we're going to bring up our FileZilla. Now, if you've never done anything like this, this can be a little bit daunting, but on the left here is going to be the files on your desktop that you want to transfer over, and on the right is going to be your PS Vita. So you might be wondering, how do you access your PS Vita? Well, that IP, you still need to have that running in the background, just keep it up on your Vita, but you need to enter right here your IP that is showing on there. So mine is going to be 192.168.1.122. Yours is probably going to be different, and the port is going to be 1337 press enter to quick connect and as you can see right here we have all of these folders popping up which you probably don't know what these mean but it's totally cool you can go ahead and go over to ux0 and inside of here we're going to see several different things that look like they're related to the vita and they are let's go ahead and right click create directory and enter it and i'm going to call this one vpk and this is where i'm going to have our install files and then all you need to do is take this vpk drag and drop it over and that's it your Enzo file has been transferred over to the Vita. At this point, you can now disconnect from here, exit out, and we're gonna finish out the rest of this on the Vita. So now, as you can see right here, this is still running, but we're gonna press circle to cancel this. And I'm going to press circle to go back, but we're gonna go back over to the UX0 directory, and we're going to be looking for VPK. That's it, that's the folder we made. So you want to press X on this, you want to select the enso.vpk and press X right there. And it's going to ask if you want to install the package. Press X to hit yes, and it's going to install your package. Now, it's going to ask you if you want to install this because, you know, this could be a dangerous package. It's not. It's enzo. As long as you get it from the proper source, which I linked in the description, it will be fine. But press X right here to finish it out and it will now install the app for Enzo on your Vita. So when it's done, it's going to disappear. All we can do is press the home button, exit out of this, and now we need to go over to this new Enzo application that's popped up. So you want to load this, press X on it, with molecular shell running, of course, and just wait a little bit. So it's going to give you a warning right here saying that this could brick your Vita, and this is a warning to everyone. This is a pretty safe program, but again, it is a modification to the system that will actually touch some sensitive files on the console, so you might want to proceed with caution on here. It should be safe, but there's always that just-in-case measure. But if you agree to it, you can press circle, and it's going to bring up this menu. It's going to say you can press, you know, cross, triangle, whatever you want to. Since we want to install Enzo, we're going to press the X button or cross. And and just wait for this to finish. And now that everything is installed, it's going to say press any key to reboot. So I'm just going to press X right there and wait for your system to reboot. And when we reboot, we're going to see something pretty neat. And as you can see inside the PlayStation logo, we now see the Enzo logo. And this is the nice thing about it. So when we wait, it's going to pop up, it's going to do all the regular system stuff, and now, at this point, let's go ahead, open this up, we're going to go down to Molecular Shell, which I showed you that it does not work without an internet connection, we have to do that install first, but if we go ahead and press X right here, check this out, it just pops up, and at this point, you can also delete the Enzo VPK if you want to, and just by doing that, we can go ahead and just go here, and you can press the triangle button, delete it, say yes, because I'm not going to need this at least right here, and if we do need it, we can always re-download it, but that is about it. So again, just to prove to you all this is working, I'm going to do this uncut, I'm going to hold this down, power off the Vita completely. Now that the Vita has been completely powered off, as you can see right there, we're going to turn it back on, wait for it, there we go and the Enzo logo pops up. So that is exactly how it is. So it's quite easy to install, and now you can get ready to install your game dumps, install your homebrew, anything else. It's just going to be that same type of process. But again, the nice thing is with Enzo, this does launch in Kaku on boot, and now we can go ahead and open up any of our homebrew on boot without needing to connect to the internet. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would very much be appreciated. If you absolutely hated it, a dislike is fine as well, too.